Okay, so this is a uh, FRQ number five. Uh, calculators uh, cannot be used. But remember, on the actual AP exam, uh, the calculators you can use them, but they're not going to be helpful. Right? They're not going to be helpful. And as you mentioned before, any arithmetic uh, stuff you don't need to do. If you have one plus one, leave it as one plus one. Okay? It'll save you time. And if you make any errors, uh, they'll minus points from it. So they actually prefer you not to uh, waste your time or make dumb errors. Then they're going to have to feel a moral obligation to minus points. Okay. So a particle moves along the x-axis. So this is a position, okay? Uh, and at time t, position at time t. And we notice a couple of things that this is a piecewise function where between zero and one, we're traveling at this, oh sorry, this is my position. And when t is greater than one, we switch to a natural log function. And where a is some type of constant, okay? Thank you, about a, which I don't see anywhere. Okay, so find the velocity at a time. So to get from position to velocity, so velocity is change in position. To talk about change in calculus, we use the idea of a derivative. So we're looking for um, v of t, which is really x prime of t. So we can take the derivative here. So to take the derivative, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of them separately. So between 0 and 1, our derivative is t cosine 2 pi t. Now, you notice that there's actually two t's there. So since there's two t's, that means we're going to do, a, since we're multiplying, we're going to do product rule. So the derivative of the front, leave the back alone. So cosine 2 pi t. And then reverse it, derivative of the back, leave the front alone. So as I said, that's t plus t. And derivative of cosine is negative sine 2 pi t and multiply by chain rule, which of 2 pi t is just 2 pi. And this happens between 0 and 1. You have to make sure you label it like that because this velocity isn't for the whole graph, just between 0 and 1. Let's go ahead and take the derivative of the natural log. That's going to give us 1 over kt. Um, then we're going to multiply that by chain rule. And the chain rule of kt is just k. Right. Yeah. This is when t is greater than or equal to 1. We can simplify this if you want to, to become one over t, if you want to, but you don't need to. Um, right here, this was a one, because the derivative of t, we're gonna reference to t, is one. All right, that's, that's it. That was two points probably. Oh, that was one point, I'm sorry, that was one point. The next question is acceleration. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity for us. So let's go ahead and take the next derivative. So the derivative of velocity, I'm going to take the derivative again. So a of t is equal to v prime of t, which is another way of saying a double prime of t. So do you have to write all this? Nope. But you at least have to write one of them. And the question was, what is the acceleration? So we're gonna I write that. If you just write the answer here without referencing what you're talking about, um, you probably won't get the points. So the idea when you're doing the free response question, you wanna make sure you show all your work, write everything out. So let's go ahead and write the derivative. The derivative of cosine two pi t is just a negative sine two pi t, and then um, multiplied by two pi. And then we're gonna say, I'm gonna simplify um, our next value real quick. It's when I simplify it's negative two pi t sine of two pi t, just to write that. So I can take the derivative of it. So if I'm taking the derivative, I see I'm gonna it's a product rule. So it's gonna be plus a negative two pi. Leave the back alone. 
sine of two pi t. Um, then we plus any sorry. I should, I should do. I should rewrite this to make it nicer. Let's stick to the rule. It's plus parentheses, right? Negative. Then we say plus um, the derivative of two okay, sine two pi t is cosine two pi t times two pi because chain rule. Then we're gonna copy negative two pi t. Let me make sure you have all your parentheses. One more, oh, can't do it. And then we're gonna write it between zero, zero and one. Oh, that was ugly. So that's our acceleration between zero and one. What about greater than t it is equal to uh, one? So we have to take that derivative, and the derivative of one over t is, uh, if you're having problems with that, this is t to negative one power. So it's negative one t to negative two power, and that's gonna happen between, when, sorry, when t is, oops, comma, t is greater than one. Okay, determine if the particle is speeding up or slowing down at t is equal to one half. Now, we mentioned before, when, it, when we hear the word slowing and sorry, slowing down or speeding up, it's a specific definition for us. Like, we have to look at a certain way. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of that. What is slowing, and, slowing down and speeding up? So let me ask you a question. If I'm driving at 30, oh, come on, come on, thing. If I'm driving at 30 miles an hour, 30 miles per hour, okay? Am I speeding up or slowing down? If I'm in my car and I'm driving at 30 miles per hour, am I speeding up or slowing down? Right, none. I'm not going up, I'm not speeding up or slowing down. But then what if I apply the brakes? Well, of course, if you brake, you are slowing down. And what happens is you are decelerating. So acceleration is decreasing. So if my velocity is positive and my acceleration is negative, that means I'm actually slowing down. Okay. But what if my velocity is 30 miles an hour? So it's 30 miles. And then I start gunning it. I step on the acceleration. Acceleration is positive. We end up speeding up. So in order for me to use that definition, that keyword, speeding up and slowing down, oh, you get into accident. Thank you. Um, but uh, if I want to speed up, I have to have a forward positive velocity. Not only do I need a positive velocity, I need to have a positive acceleration. I need to be adding to my velocity, not braking. That would be subtracting from my velocity. What if I was going backwards? So another way of thinking about this is imagine if you're on a field and you're running, right? That's not a running person. Come on. Okay, like that. Okay. He's running, okay? And if I have a forward velocity, a positive velocity, and the wind is blowing toward my back in the same direction as me. It will help me increase my speed, right? So if the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign, we are increasing in speed. If the velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, That means we are going to be decreasing. We're going to be slowing down. So speeding up when they're the same sign and slowing down. Why do we have to say the same sign? Why can't we just say they're both positive? Because if I was going in a negative velocity, going the other way, negative 
velocity going the other way. Sorry, let me draw this around. And my wind was also blowing the same direction. We would be speeding up in that direction. It doesn't care which direction you're going. It cares that are you speeding up or slowing down in that direction that you're headed. So if they're the same sign, we're speeding up. And if they're opposite signs, we're slowing down. Well, let's see, looking at the question, what's given? Determine if the particle is speeding up or slowing down at t is equal to 1 over 2. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at the velocity and acceleration for our problem. Lucky for us, in our last two A and B, they had us write out the velocities and the acceleration equations. Yay. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our velocity equation. The velocity at one half is equal to, um, that's an ugly mess, right? Okay, so do I have to write down, do I have to plug into both equations for my piecewise function? Where is t? t is equal to 1 half. Does that involve both equations? It's just the top equation. So I just have to worry about the top equation. So it's cosine 2 at 1 half, or 2 pi, 1 half. I'm, pl I'm plugging it in right now. Plus 1 half um, negative sine of 2 pi, 1 half. And then 2 pi. Okay, where I plugged in our t, t, and t. Okay, t is one half. Now, you could waste time <laughs> plugging in, but you don't have to. If I simplify cosine of pi, right? Okay? Because the two's divided out. And this is going to be a minus, um, minus what? Minus uh, this two and this two divided out. So it's pi sine of uh, those divide up pi again. Okay. And then you have to look back and remember your sine and cosine at pi, drawing your unit circle. Here's pi. Cosine is negative one, but sine at pi is zero. So this is gonna be negative one. So my velocity, Wait, yes, let me one second. Okay. So we found that the velocity is negative, but that's not enough to say if it's increasing or decreasing, slowing down or speeding up. So we now have to find the acceleration at one half. And again, that's using the top equation because I care about only the, whoops, let me erase that one. I care about only when t is one half, and that refers to the top equation. Let's go ahead and plug in values. So that's gonna be equal to um, negative two pi. I'm simplifying while I'm writing it sine of 2 pi uh, 1 half, which we know it's going to just be pi, plus a, this is going to be a crazy mess, right, print negative 2 pi sine 2 pi 1 half, uh, plus uh, parentheses cosine 2 pi 1 half, and then 2 pi, and then times a negative 2 pi 1 half. So I'm just plugging that all in. And then so we can simplify. That's going to be negative 2 pi sine of pi. And we know that's going to be 0. Um, that's a plus. So we can just write it as negative 2 pi sine of pi again. And then plus, oh, that's going to be negative again, 2 pi. This two and this two divide out. So we're left with two pi squared uh, cosine of pi. And this is zero, this is zero, and we're left with a negative two pi squared. Oops, is that negative or positive? Did I lose negative sign? Supposed to be positive. Oh, thank you. It's because this is a negative one, right? Cosine of pi is negative one. So we're left with being pi, two pi squared. 
which is greater than zero, which is positive. So because of this, we can say since the signs are opposite signs, and the word that you actually write is opposite signs, because it's opposite signs, this is decreasing or slowing down. So for D, write but do not solve the equation using a single trig function to determine the values for T, which the particle is at rest. So the particle has rest when the velocity is zero. So where is the velocity zero? Well, we don't know. We just know the position. But we do have the velocity equations, V of T. We said was cosine of 2 pi T plus um, T. Oh, sorry. Let's rewrite that as, let's simplify that negative 2 pi uh, t has sine of 2 pi t. And then the other one was 1 over t. t is between 0 and 1, and t is uh, greater than 1. OK, so will this value ever be 0? Well, let's look at the easy one first. Can I ever make 1 over t equal to 0? Just because if I plug in a value, will that ever become zero? Answer is nope, especially since my graph only works from zero to one. So it has to be on top. Now again, this is not a graphing problem. I'm sorry, not a graphing calculator problem. So we're gonna have to do this by hand. So question is two, so cosine of two pi t minus two pi t sine of two pi t. When will this ever equal to zero? Let's go ahead and simplify as much as we can. We're gonna move stuff around. I'm gonna move this over since it's negative. This cosine two pi t is equal to two pi t sine of two pi t. Let's move the sine and cosine to one side. Rewrite that as cotangent of two pi t is equal to two pi. Of two pi t, I'm sorry. And then Did they want us to solve it? Right, but do not solve an equation using a single trig function. That's a single trig function to determine the values of t where the particle is at rest. That's it. And this, of course, you have to say between, sorry, uh, t is between 0 and 1. Those are the values that we're allowed to use. Okay. They didn't want two trig functions, they wanted one. So I gave them one, I gave them a cotangent. Okay, number five, which is the value of k such that the velocity of the particle is continuous? Explain your reasoning. Okay, continuous means that there are no breaks. And when we're looking at the problem, x of t is equal to t cosine of 2 pi t between 0 and t, and that's uh, between 0 and 1. And the second part is natural log of kt when t is greater than 1. So the idea of this graph is between 0 and one, we have some type of thing going on. And after t is equal to t is greater than one, we have some other graph that's going that long. Now, do these points necessarily have to meet? Imagine this was your roller coaster. Final destination, you're going down the tracks, you're approaching the brake. That's not good, right? So what does this y value and what does this y value need to be? So that this continuous. And you could try saying these both have to be five, they both have to be 10. The idea here is that they just have to be the same number, whatever that is. And for us to say the same, so we're saying t cosine of two pi t has to equal to natural log of kt. They have to equal to each other. 
So what we do is, like, one way is to say that, is that we can go ahead and, um, oops, okay, so I misread it. They want it such that the velocity of the particle is continuous, right? So the velocity is continuous. Wait, such that the velocity of the particle is continuous. So we want to look at the velocity. Let's go look at the velocity. Whoops. So let's go look at the velocity. The velocity we wrote down as cosine 2 pi t plus t theta sine. Oh, we're going to rewrite that, right? Oh, whoops. We need to, um, when I took the derivative right here, that k goes away. So what value of k such that the velocity of particle is continuous? We need to figure out what the value of k is in the regular problem. So that's what we were doing before. So let's see. So we set them equal to each other. Let's go ahead and figure out what that value of k would be right here. So we know t is equal to the common value that they share is one. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Because there is no k. Once I take velocity, there's no k anymore. So we're going to say one cosine two pi one is equal to the natural log of k. The cosine of 2 pi we said was negative 1 is equal to natural log of k. We're going to e to both sides. Oh, sorry. That's a, no, that's a positive one. Oops. I was back to our last problem. The cosine of 2 pi is just positive 1. All right, to solve for k, we take the e to both sides. k is equal to e. Right. So now that we um, can find a value that would make them um, continuous, so we have t cosine of 2 pi t and natural log of e t. And that's our position function. So now we know it's continuous on the particle. Now let's look for the derivative there. Now what is the value of k such that the velocity of the particle is continuous? So, so to answer the question, the value of k has to be e. And now let's go ahead and check at the derivative, the velocity equation now. So the velocity equation at t is equal to one is cosine two pi plus one negative sine 2 pi, and then 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0. Cosine is 1. So it's going to be 1 there. So if the velocity is continuous, on my second equation, which was the right equation, was 1 over t. If this gives me 1, that means it's continuous on the velocity equation. Yeah, thank you, Abner. I gave you guys the acceleration equation. So if we plug in t is 1, so v of 1 is 1. That's 1 over 1 is 1. Now, why do they write the limits? It's because when I'm plugging 1 here, which of these two equations actually can you plug in 1 to? The top equation or the bottom equation? You can only plug it into the equal one, and that's the bottom equation. Only the bottom equation allows us to actually have a value there. So when we write the limit, it allows me to say, what should it have been? So when I wrote this, you should have wrote the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of v of t. And over here, you should have wrote instead the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side 
of V of T. That's a proper way of writing it. Because you can't just write it V of one. Because V of one, looking back at the original equation, V of one here, sorry, let me erase some of this stuff. V of one is actually only this guy. So you can only plug it into this equation. 